Bradbury uh, Kermis preview. Uh, we just rolled out of the football club, uh, or the soccer club as they call it here, and we're going to do a lap. You can see Louis from London, as he's collectively named, is on the right-hand side. His wheel's just bobbing through. He's here for the commentary. Yeah, currently smashing Charlie up the first part of this lap uh, of the Bradbury Kermis that we'll be racing on Saturday. Um, we're approaching the first of three big hitters, uh, which is the only chance we'll have to do some damage against the real fat cunts that we're <laughs> Yeah, no, it should, be, it should be a good good cause. Pretty hilly, like no real flats at all. Um, I think people are just going to get shelled. Uh, it's I'm really not, just rolling hills. I don't think it's going to be... There might, I mean, I'll probably be wrong about this because I'm saying it now, but I don't think it'll be super aggressive just because people are going to sort of be slightly intimidated by the, by the terrain. But I think people are just going to get shelled out the back pretty much all day. Um, I think our races will be like 35k because we're racing C grade, so it's about an hour. But you can see this is the first the first part of the the triple kicker, as it's known. It's like 900 meters, five percent, um, but it's got these three walls and descents in it. Um, so how do you find this climb, first climb, Louis? So it was it was really draining because they're quite long. They're like slogs. They they kind of like just drag out for a while, and they kind of like top out at nine percent. Um, and that really did hurt, and so we were doing, I was holding about 380, 390 up here. Um, weight makes quite a big difference um, on the steeper stuff. Yeah, I think it, uh, most like 80 kilo riders will probably be dropped really, uh, in my opinion, just because, um, especially on the last lap, because if, if people like me are a lot lighter, just absolutely launch it, it'll be hard to, it'll be hard to get back on um, in, re in reality. Maybe in higher grades, not as much because the speed will be higher, but I think at the lower grades, the difference in speed uh, that will happen due to people accelerating will be quite a lot. Um, so you can see we pass the cyclists here, and this is really where you've got to pay attention on the downhills because this, this is the first part, then you go downhill, then you've got another climb, then downhill, and then the last climb. Um, the good thing about this course is it's not, it's not very open, um, so it's pretty close, so the wind shouldn't be too bad. Um, and it also means that you won't be able to really see people if they go around the corner, which is pretty good. So it will be good for breakaways, I think, potentially. Uh, I'm not sure how C grade will roll, uh, like roll out. What do you think will happen, Louis? Well, I'm, I'm most interested to see how these long, um, well, kickers start, um, kind of like break up the bunch, because it's right at the start. So really on the last lap, Charlie's got a plan to... To launch. All right, it. don't tell all my viewers. <laughs> right. All right, so ignore that. We're, <laughs> we're, we're just going to sit in and wait, wait for the sprint. But you saw there, it got up to 11%. Um, I'm not going to give away any of my plans. So it got up to 11% there. Yeah. So that, that's like true sort of climb. It's like if you, if you can't match the watts, then you're going to get dropped. I think the only respite is it's not for very long. And then, but then there's a climb here again. So I'm, I'm in two minds if it's going to be super aggressive because people are going to be like, great, it's hills. Or if people are going to be like, Oh, I just want, want to wait for the sprint. I'm just going to sit in the whole time. It's and then, gonna be, this bit, though, is going to be really, really draining. And then we get to this first corner um, as we turn left. Uh, and then here's you kind of go out of sight. So it's time to really smack it up and put some real mental damage in. Because as soon as people are turning around this corner, they also won't. Wait, where's the corner going? Yeah, it's just coming around on the left-hand side here. Right, Sorry, the, yeah. the, the course map didn't really work on the Garmin verb, so you won't be able to see the map. But I'll, I'll leave a link to the uh, segment below. Uh, but this corner's pretty technical. I, I almost crashed into Louis here because I saw some gravel and took it pretty wide. Uh, but yeah, it was. It's one of these courses where I feel I feel like it's going to be going to be interesting. It's it's a lot uh, hillier than Uradlo if you've done Uradlo. Um, just because in Uradlo there's sort of one big climb and then the rest of it's not it's not really. It's hard to make a difference. While here it's constantly rolling and there's some steep parts and each climb is just like maybe ten or fifteen meters, maybe twenty meters longer than like. Uh, they could be and so I feel like people in the last 20 minutes will be quite hard to hold the wheel on some of these kickers because they're just slightly too long maybe like just five percent too long uh, but it will definitely be exciting exciting racing uh, especially in like A grade and whatever and as you can see now the gradient it just drags for ages and ages uh, and this is just going to drain people every single lap yeah I think um, it's it's good for the climbers to be honest like it's not obviously it's not a true climbing course and doesn't end in it on a climb but I feel like it'll be It'll be sort of a mix between climbers and people who can just have a decent sprint and can make it over. Um, so Louis here has got a decent sprint. Um, he's not too heavy either, so I feel like it's it's quite a good race for him. Just if he manages to sit in and no break goes, then there's probably a good chance he'll get a good result. Well, for me, I mean, my sprint's not great. Uh, it's not terrible, but I feel like I'll need to be a bit more aggressive and try and get into sort of a, a, bu like a bunch of maybe two or three or just go solo, to be honest, in order to have a chance of winning this. I think this. if we do some more sprint training before... 
before Bradbury, you, know, you might have a, a shot. Yeah, we'll see. With these 38 bars on now, I feel like a, I feel like a track sprinter. Yeah, Charlie's just um, put some money down and on the table and bought some <laughs> zip SL70 Ergos that we that we fitted uh, yesterday. Yeah, he, check, might, he might put in some footage. Yeah, check out check out the video. I've um uh, just will have just uploaded it, so I'll, I'll leave a link at the end of the video and in the description. So you can see here, this is pretty good. Um, if you're if you've got a 5211, you'll be basically in the top gear just going hard so i don't think many people are going to be able to close a gap on this part of the course uh it also has a slight tailwind today not really noticeable um but you can see we're going 50 k's an hour with like 230 watts so if you're doing 300 350 you'll be going like 55 k's an hour and i don't think many people are going to catch you um on this particular part of the course but this is where it starts to ramp up and this is really it's going to really hurt because you just lose so much momentum compared to a group like when you're in a group the people at front will be hitting it and as soon as you hit that rise people from behind are fresh and carrying momentum and can just sprint around it because it gets up to like seven percent so i think it's going to be it's going to be pretty horrible um and i think for the last the last lap it will be interesting to see how it plays out will people attack and well no one knows the road surface is pretty good to be honest uh there's no real potholes i don't didn't think of any do you see any louis not really and and yeah no so we basically just spent this lap going round uh, at a reasonable pace i think i averaged about 260 watts for the um for that but that was kind of skewed because we sat there for 10 minutes at the at the football yeah pitch but otherwise yeah no the the course looks really good i'm really looking forward to it um yeah me and charlie just sat sat neck and neck and uh, and saw how the course went and this yeah. is one of the last left hand turns um, have we passed the alpacas yet? Uh, no, there was some alpacas on the right-hand side. Hopefully, they'll be giving you a bit of a cheers. They were, they were not very friendly to us, unfortunately. Trying to trying to give them a date, but they were having absolutely none of it. Uh, but you can see, like, the road's pretty grippy as well. It's supposed to rain on Saturday, which will be pretty exciting. Obviously, if you're watching this at a later date, take no no. Uh, I'm not sure if it's going to rain that Saturday when you're racing. Uh, but anyway, it. I, I feel like if it rains, it shouldn't be too bad because most of the corners aren't really very technical. They're they're pretty like. Rock, they're just left handers every single one's a left hander and there's none there's none on the descent really are there like they're all, the descent is pretty no, much open not really it's very looks good not technical now it looks good like it's it's just sort of a power climb you can see here so we're still going around and this is the bit where i was sort of like i don't think if you attacked on the very first climbs you'll be able to make it all the wrap all the way around just because it's too hilly um and sort of this will really like bite your average speed and people behind you will just be sort of coming up next to you and like i feel like the group will just have so much more momentum over these rollers so it won't be super hard um but the sprint's gonna be super exciting what do you think is good what do you think the best tactic is for the sprint louis go early or leave i it would to the say end? go early uh, a good friend of mine um well i say friend but it's <laughs> that terms um used loosely um no no, no uh, a, a guy anyway, a okay. really really good sprinter he would really strongly are on the side of going early and i would agree with him uh it's downhill uh, and thus uh, you'll be able to hold speed really really well so I'd hold an aero tuck as long as possible and as soon as it flattens out to launch um, but yeah no I would break away as quickly as possible on that descent uh, and then launch on the flat yeah because at, at one point if it, it was a slight headwind today uh, but if it's not a headwind then definitely there's no way people will catch you if you sprint and just like hold the aero tuck you're pre pretty much going the same speed um, and you can see even here, this is a pretty fast descent. Like I'm not doing that many watts, I'm up to 60 k's an hour almost. So again, moving up is gonna be hard in the end. Like if you're going for the sprint, I'd say here, you've gotta be in a pretty good position going up. Maybe on those little rises before you could start moving up. This bit also, I think you can move up just here because the speed does start to slow down, but it's not really, it doesn't look enough to actually launch an attack, but it'll be a good place to move up in the final. This being um, the final kicker before a left hand turn. Yeah, we're just just going to try up to like a, a scroll, a rolling left, and then it's a sharp left onto the final road before the sprint. So here, you I think you've got to move up in position. I'd say on the outside, closest to the white line, um, because if you can take the corner fast and other people, you'll be able to go around um, and just slot in in front of someone else. You probably want to be like top top five here, really. Um, maybe you could go a little bit later because it's such a fast finish. It just depends, obviously, if it's a headwind or a tailwind. Um, but if it's a headwind, obviously you want to leave it pretty late for your for it sprint. Um, but if it's a headwind, definitely go like four, even four hundred meters to go. Like you know the the stage four, I think it was in the Tour Down Under in Uradla, where Sagan just sort of went early and just sprinted in the saddle. I think that could definitely be something that would happen on this one. So here, I think if there's no attacks gone by now, I don't think anyone's going to break away really um, on this descent, just because the draft is so strong on these descents that like you really got to launch it. And we're, we're really hoping for uh, a tailwind because that will just make our lives a lot easier in terms of the climbing, but also in terms of this final um, finish. We I was spinning out in the 
Yeah, yeah look, we're, we're only doing like 200 watts and it's like 65 k's an hour and this is into a slight headwind so you can see it's an outrageously fast sprint. I'm not 100% sure when the finish is. It will be along here pretty much. Uh, also, okay. don't cross the road like I did, but no, as you saw, I launched my sprint um, and we're just rolling to the line now. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's such a long... Well, as you see, minus four percent, so you can really hold speed real easy. So. Like if you have a fifty-three eleven, like in, if you have a fifty-three chainring or fifty-five chainring in your backyard somewhere, put it on for this race, like definitely, because you could just power away from people and they wouldn't be able to hold your wheel. So that's the football club on the left where you'll be starting. The, we've just done a complete lap. Um, should be really good. I'll post the Strava link and some other videos that I said in the description below. Cheers for watching. We'll have a race video probably on Sunday, uh, on documenting that. See you on the podium. Yeah, and hopefully, hopefully we'll be able to get a win. So cheers for watching, and we'll see you in the next vid.